Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video will be the conclusion to my Mini Mulcher Stability Quest, a little three-part series I've filmed over the month of June. If you haven't seen the other two videos, I'll link them in the description. Also, feel free to check out my whole Mini Mulcher video playlist, which I'll link below and add a card to in the top right corner. I have, for all intents and purposes, completed this quest. To recap, my goals for Mini Mulcher were, number one, last three minutes, number two, remain drivable at 50% weapon speed, number three, self-write reliably, and number four, never lose to itself. I had completed the first of these goals months ago. I've only ever used the same 300 mAh 3S battery, which is totally fine. That would allow a constant current draw of an average of 6 amps for the 3 minute match. The power demands of the bot increase exponentially with the increasing weapon speeds because air resistance increases with the square of speed. The motor I'm using can peak at 22.5 amps on startup, but as you can see from my last video, I can easily run it at 50% speed for more than 6 minutes before running out of battery. Remaining drivable was a real challenge, however, until I got these new weapons. I mentioned in my last update I planned to try something different to minimize the risk of pull hood instability, or intermediate axis instability, and boy did that work wonders. The old weapon bar has about 23 times the inertia about its long axis as about its short axis. This ratio of 23 to 1 is terrible, and I had no way of knowing how bad it was going to be until trying something different. I'm not aware of any simple calculations to show the upper limits of a stable weapon, or any way to accurately model this, but if anyone does, please comment below. In any case, I designed this new axe head weapon with a 3 to 1 ratio along the long and short axes. To accomplish this, I made it a single tooth weapon with as wide of a counterweight as possible and hollow sections in the middle, pushing the weight out as far as possible on the sides. This weapon had to be much shorter reach, however, to be around the same weight as the long bar, so it's only a 7 inch effective diameter, but it's still gigantic for an ant weight. This weapon also has the benefit of getting double the bite on hits, meaning instead of just punching holes in cans, it's able to tear right through them. With this weapon I can get up to very nearly 100% speed and drive around just fine. At max speeds it does vibrate quite a bit though, and the weapon motor gets way too hot, softening even the Ally 910 nylon I'm using, which is far more temperature resistant than PLA. After the bot is off, I saw over 85 Celsius on the plastic bottom, but due to reflectivity of the motor, a laser thermometer can't accurately measure the motor directly. I'm guessing it was in excess of 100 degrees Celsius. The same thing happens with the bot struggling to self-write as well, since it's basically receiving as much current as possible from the ESC. This brings us to the redesigned writing arm. I thought I'd cracked the code on this weeks ago, but it turns out I was sorely mistaken. Take a look at some of these tests. With the last writing arm, I did about 5 tests with the long arm and 4 of them were successful. And then with the axe head weapon, I did 5 tests in a row, of which 4 were successful at first. But then once I brought the bot in my backpack with the self writing arm crushed in my bag to uh, where Bloodsport was being worked on and then brought it back, I tried to test it a bunch of times in a row and it failed every single time. I think that the flex that my backpack forced on it made it so that it's overall a lot more pliable now somehow, and that just made it a lot worse for writing since it can just kind of fold under the robot instead of enforcing its shape and propping the robot up on it like it needs to to actually self-write. With this new design to prove to myself that it would work reliably, I tested it not once, not five times, not ten times, but more than 16 times in a row with success every single time. You don't even want to know how long it took me to composite this clip together. There was another change I had to make to get this kind of reliability, and that affected the chassis. For one, the shoulder bolt into the chassis making up the weapon shaft could spin because it would strip out the printed threads in my original design. I had changed to a nylock already which solved most of this problem, but I needed to adjust the fit on that nut better because it could still kind of spin when I over torqued it. I reprinted the chassis in Alloy 910 and printed a new lid with a longer lip, and I also added a screw hole at the front of the chassis and in the forks that'll stop the front forks from flying off all the time. 
Of course that meant reprinting the forks as well, so now the bot is all black. So to recap, I've been able to drive for 6 minutes at 50% throttle, no problem. The bot remains perfectly stable even beyond 50% throttle. self riding is more reliable than ever and puts less stress on the motor, requiring less battery power and generating less heat. All 16 of the tests that you saw earlier were done with just one charge. The bot can't easily lose its front forks anymore, and it's much more difficult for it to flip itself over or otherwise get into a compromising position under its own power. And the bot can self right from awkward positions, push away from the wall, etc. I've officially completed my stability quest! I may still make a few changes here and there to make small upgrades. I for sure want to prepare some alternative front attachments for fighting different styles of opponents. My plan for Mini Mulcher is to bring it alongside Division to the next Norwalk Havoc event. Currently I'm planning on bringing Division, Draconid, and Mini Mulcher all to the Sunday, July 19th Norwalk Havoc event, and I'll be able to fight Draconid as a 12 pound sportsman bot, which was okayed by the event organizer even though it has a saw on it, and both Division and Mini Mulcher can fight as a 4 pound multi-bot team in the beetleweight category because of the weird rules Norwalk Havoc has. Before I go, I'd like to get your opinion on some future video ideas that I've got for the next couple weeks. Please comment below which of any of these you'd like to see. Option 1. How Just Cause videos are made, showing how I light and film everything, what equipment I personally use for filming my robots, and if people are interested I can even talk about my custom workstation PC and the software I use for editing these videos. Option 2. Robot Testing Essentials. I go over how to use a power meter and tachometer to test motors, speed controllers, and batteries, and how I utilize the high speed camera footage I've gathered to help figure out what might be going wrong in tests or fights, and determine exact weapon spin up times. Option 3, Pit Table Essentials. What tools and equipment I'm bringing with me to competitions to service and repair my robots, and how do I pack and transport the equipment and the bots themselves between here and the competition? If you'd like to get some sneak peeks and early access to the stuff that I'm working on, be sure to follow me on my Instagram, linked down below. Thanks for watching! Make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and like I said before, leave a comment if you have suggestions for future videos, or you just have any questions or comments you'd like to make. I almost always respond to the comments as they come in within a couple hours, and I make sure to read all of them.